from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. I am so, so, so glad you're here. We are thrilled to have you. We're excited to be in this conversation, and we completely honor you for your patience. Really. So I have a couple of things that I'm, I'm uh, here to say, and then I'm, I'm going to introduce Jeff Kinney. <laughs> So, ooh, sorry about that. So let me tell you a little bit about um, the li Library of Congress. Raise your hand if you, this is your first time here. Welcome, welcome. So it's our mission, it's our mission here at the Library of Congress to provide a very rich, enduring source of knowledge and it's designed to inspire and engage you. And I am clear that you all have some knowledge of Jeff Kinney, Kinney some knowledge of the Diary of the Wimpy Kid, Greg, Brawley, some new kids. I'm a little, my son's 13, so I, I haven't read one of these in about a year, but I know some of the characters, right? So it's our intention. We're gonna try this again. Right. I'm actually going to keep talking while he does his thing, so we'll manage our time accordingly. So it's our intention at the Center for the Book that we promote reading and literacy and books and libraries and poetry and literature, and we do that because we feel like they are the best tools for you all to live lives of choice. Like, you get to say how your life goes when you know how to read and write. And here at the Library of Congress, it's our focus to provide all kinds of programming and activities to do that. So today's event is one in a series that we have. We welcome you to. There's a special event that's happening today. Today is, is not just that Jeff Kinney is here. What else is special about today? Does anybody know? He's signing the books, that's true. What book? What's the book? Double down, that's right. And what's special about today is it is his first day of the tour for that new book. So he chose to be here to celebrate and introduce his 11th book, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Double Down with you. Woohoo! So just so you know, these books have been on New York Times bestsellers list for weeks. The books are translated in 52 languages. 180 million copies have been sold. So imagine how many of you there are in this room and how many of you, how many of you have read all 10 of the books? Raise your hand. All right, great. So number 11 is just waiting for, how many have done like eight, at least eight of the books? All right, great. All right, so listen, we're gonna introduce who's in the room and then we'll be ready for Jeff, hopefully. Keep going. Okay, great. We have a number of schools in the room and I'd like to just acknowledge them. Starting with the District of Columbia, we have Brent Elementary. <laughs> Kimball Elementary. 
Welcome. We've got Langdon Elementary. <laughs> Truesdale Education Campus. And I mentioned my son is 13. He's an eighth grader at Two Rivers PCS. And we have the Graphic Novel Club from Baloo Senior High School. Where are you guys? Baloo! All right, and from Prince George's County, Maryland, we've got the Benjamin Stoddard Middle School. Gwen Park Middle School. Did I miss anybody? Okay. All right, so we're in the final stages of wrapping up the technical difficulties. So I thought I'd do this. Let me have all the parents and the teachers and the chaperones and the adults who made it possible for you to get here to please stand and be acknowledged. So, I just want you guys to listen. Since, since we have a couple minutes, I just want to take the time to acknowledge the parents and the teachers and the adults that came to make this event possible. I want you guys to notice, how many of you know the Ago? Okay, that means, get, let me have your attention. Let me have your ears on, lips off. I want to acknowledge the teachers and the parents and the adults that made it possible for you to be here because it's a really, really great opportunity to have you be so excited about books and reading. And we know that it's not just today's event and being here that is what they did to make it possible, that every day you give your lives to supporting education, empowering children. I'd just like to say thank you. And I'd like the students in the room to say a big thank you to your teachers and adults. So. All right, so I, I think we're, we may be close, but I don't have a signal yet. So I wanna hear from you all while they work this out. Besides Greg, who are some of our favorites in the 10 books we've read thus far? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is, this is where we can't hear all the voices at the same time. So raise your hand and I'm gonna call on a couple of you. Dog Days. You ready? Okay. All right. Uh, two more and then he's almost ready. Yes, yes. Old school. Yeah. Raleigh rules. Rule. Roderick's rule. I know Roderick's rules. Roderick's rules. All right, and it's my understanding that we are actually ready. So you'll have a little bit of time with Q and A uh, for questions and answers with with Jeff after his presentation. Let's give a huge welcome to Jeff Kenny. Hey guys. Hi everyone, all right, 
Thank you guys so much. I know how frustrating it was to, to wait for that long. I'm embarrassed that we were late. We were trying to get here through DC traffic, which did you know, it's pretty bad. I didn't know that. So I'm sorry, and then we couldn't get the computers to work, so now we've got everything going, and let's start over. Okay, thank you guys so much for coming out here today. It's great for me to be home, actually. I live in Massachusetts now, and I have for 20 years, but I started off actually in Fort Washington, Maryland. How many people have heard of Fort Washington? Yeah? Fort Washington, Maryland is where I started off. And in my mind, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid world is here in the DC area. Whenever I'm writing or drawing Diary of a Wimpy Kid stories, I'm thinking of my home where I grew up. So that's Fort Washington, Maryland. And there are lots of things in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books that actually happen. So I wanted to show you a few. Let's see if this works. I have this imaginary clicker, right? Let's see if this works, right? Oh, it worked. Oh no, it didn't. Let's hit Command Tab there and go back to the Prezi. We're gonna keep, keep having problems. Oh, hit left arrow a bunch of times. You're, something's going crazy here. Okay, right arrow one time. Let's see how that works. Right arrow one time. There we go, there we go. All right, now we're on a roll. Okay, so my friend and I, we actually tried to build the world's biggest snow, snowman. Has anybody ever here ever tried that? Yes? We thought we could build like a 50-foot snowman, right? It didn't work out. Instead, what happened was we tore up all of the, the grass and the sod in our yard. So we actually tore up my friend's front yard with this giant snowball. So we had this big brown meatball. That's one of the things that happened in real life. One of the things, how many people here have an older brother or sister? Okay. They're tough sometimes. One of the things that happened to me, one of the things that happened to me was that my brother, in the middle of the summer, just like in Diary of a Wimpy Kid 1, he woke me up in the middle of summer and he told me I was late for my first day of school. So here's this picture. Right? You remember that picture? And then I went downstairs. I went downstairs and made myself breakfast at about 3 in the morning. So my dad found me like this, right? My friend and I made a haunted house just like Greg and Rowley did. So we scared the neighborhood kids, charged them and then scared them. And let's advance to the next slide here. We also did something very stupid. We had a game where I would throw a football at my friend, not so smart. And that happened, so he got hurt. And also, with another friend of mine, we actually got into a fight. I don't recommend it, but this is what it looked like. We didn't know how to fight, so we kind of looked like this, right? Let's take another look. Yeah, that was us. <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing. And I was also on a swim team, and I, w I hated to be in the water in the cold, right? So I would go into the locker room, and you've probably seen this in the books, right? I was cold, I was cold, and so then I did this, right? So a lot of the stories in Diary of a Wimpy Kid happened to me in real life, and I would really recommend to you guys that if you have funny things that happen to you in your real life, write it down, because you could write 10, 12 Diary of a Wimpy Kid books easy based on your lives. And so I wanted to, I'm gonna try a technical trick. Let's see if this works. Okay, we're gonna go Command Tab, right? And then go to the Finder, that's right, yep. Yeah. Almost, Finder. Ah. Command Tab and Release. We're gonna do this, you'll see. Command Tab and Release. <laughs> okay, so let's, um, Go to the finder in the bottom left-hand corner. You see that icon in the best bottom left-hand corner? Yeah, let's click on that. Okay, great. In a second, we're gonna launch one that says Global Tour. So I'm at the start of a global tour. This is, I actually wanted to start where I grew up, where I started, and, but last year, we actually went around the world, and we're about to go around the world again. So I wanted to show you a video from last year's tour. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, let's see if this works. So let's hit play. Hope we get sound and everything. We don't have sound. <laughs> I'll show you around. Okay. So we don't have sound, which is interesting. Can we pause? <laughs> no sound. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna show you what happened on this tour. We went all over the place. We went to the UK, we went to Brazil. You remember from the Olympics? Oh, here we go. Japan. Thank you guys for checking out that video. And you saw that I got all the way back to my home in a little town called Plainville, Massachusetts, where I have two kids. Let's go back to the Prezi. So, yep, there we go. Oh, we're getting the hang of it. So I like to collect funny stories. You know, that's what I do when I travel uh, from my life. So let's take a look at how I collect them. So I recorded everything in a sketch pad. So I had this 77-page sketchbook. And I wrote down every funny thing that had ever happened to me. And so as I went along, I think I, I started writing smaller and smaller because I was afraid of getting to the end too quickly. And by the very end, the last page looked like this. So every funny thing that ever happened to me in my life was recorded in a sketch journal. And I'll tell you a story that happened to me a few years ago. We actually got to go to the White House and see the Obamas, right? And it should have been a great day, and it was a great day, but I'll tell you something funny that happened. You can see my two boys over there to the right, Will and Grant, and they're kind of bad, right? They're, they're kind of bad kids in a way. They're good and they're bad. Um, but one of the things they did was they said, hey, when you read your book on the White House lawn, we want to sit next to you. You know, we want to get in on that. And I said, okay. You know, I knew they were going to misbehave, so I said, y you have to behave. You can't do anything weird or, you know, hey, I'll give you ice cream if you actually behave, right? So here are my two boys reading and sitting next to me, right? And what I found out was that um, my younger son, at one point, he got up and he read out of my lap, and it was a very sweet moment. He was just learning to read. And then afterwards, I was like, you know, you guys were really good, so I gave them some ice cream, right? And then I found out when I went home, I watched the White House website, and I watched the tape, and when my younger son was reading out of my lap, let's see if I got the image right here. Yes, my older son was spanking him. <laughs> right. So now, that, that's part of official White House documentation now. My older son spanking my younger son. Right. So lots of funny things have happened to me, lots of funny things have happened to you guys. 
When I was a kid, I got really interested in cartoons. I wanted to be a cartoonist. My favorite reading was comics, right? So I like Donald Duck, right? I like Calvin and Hobbes. Have you guys seen Calvin and Hobbes? And The Far Side was one of my favorites, right? And so when I, when I went to college, I decided to create my own cartoon character whose name was Igdoof. So I'll show you what Igdoof looked like. That was Igdoof. I created him at the University of Maryland. And I thought that I'd be able to uh, take Igdoof out into the world and become a syndicated newspaper cartoonist. But it didn't work out for me. And what I found when I started, you know, Igdoof just has this kind of weird look. And you'll notice there's one thing he's got in common with Greg. Do you see it? His hair. That's right. What I found out is that there are a lot of cartoon characters who are boys who are bald or nearly bald. Can anyone tell me the most famous nearly bald cartoon boy? Somebody said Caillou. All right. I heard Charlie Brown. I heard Charlie Brown. So what I wanted to show you is that Here's how cartooning is different from illustration. In cartooning, you're trying to use as few lines as possible to make the biggest impact, right? So I'm gonna draw a few, uh, a few pieces of drawings and see if you know which characters I've got going just from a few lines, okay? See if this works. All right. So how about this one? All right, let's see if you know from just that. Now, let's, let's not all yell at once. Raise your hand up there with the green shirt. Yeah. What, who's that? You don't know? Do you know? Rowley? No, I'm going to keep going here. Now you know? I heard Bart Simpson. Yes. Okay, how about, how about this one? I heard Charlie Brown, that's right, right? Okay, I'm gonna go with just, let's see. Okay, this one takes a few more strokes, okay? SpongeBob, yes. And isn't that amazing that you know that from just a few pen strokes? I mean, look how, those are so few lines and you guys know those characters. All right, I'm gonna do just one line, a curvy line. Now you can't yell out, I need a hand raise, okay? It's a curvy line. And I'm not that good of an illustrator, so let's try this. Okay. All right, you up there with the, uh, let's see, how about with the hoodie? What's that? Big Bird, no, but kind of, you're in the right family. Yes? Yeah? Manny, no? What's that? No? This is... You're gonna be mad when I show you. I'm gonna show you. That's right, Woodstock. Woodstock from Charlie Brown. I didn't do a great job, but he's kind of like this, right? And then something, something like that, right? And then with Greg Hefley, you know, I think, I think that you know from Greg Hefley is that I think this is all I need for Greg, Greg Hefley. I think you might have guessed it from that, right? So what I think it would be fun to do, what, what I wanted to tell you is that I fell in love with a cartoon strip when I was in college, and it was called Big Nate. How many of you guys have seen Big Nate? Yeah. So let's advance that slide. So Big Nate. It was one of my favorite cartoons, and I wrote to the author, and he wrote me back. And then one day, I looked in the Washington Post, and I saw this. Big Nate had drawn his own comic, and he put Igdoof in the comic. Can you see Igdoof up there? And can you name the other cartoon characters that Igdoof is in that sticker with, just from those really scribbly drawings? Anybody? Who's in the upper left-hand corner? Bart Simpson, right. Who's to the right of Bart? Can anybody guess it just for, I'll bet some grown-ups know. That's Garfield. Garfield, right. 
So what I really like about cartooning is that you are just trying to boil something down to its essence. So you guys did a really good job of guessing which character I was drawing from here. And I'm gonna invite a kid up to draw, to learn how to draw Greg. And it's you, come on up. <laughs> All right, let's give this a try. Hi, I'm Jeff. What's your name? Caleb? Okay, so have you ever tried to draw Greg? Did you notice it's kind of hard? Oh, you, could you just draw him right flat out right now with no help or you need a little bit of help? Okay, so drawing Greg, it looks really simple but it's actually hard because there are so few lines that if you mess up a line, everything looks wrong, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that I always start with the eyes, right? You can do that, right? All right, right next to it. Now make sure they're far enough apart. Yeah, good, excellent. And then I always go with the nose, which is really just kind of almost like a C, like a flat C, right? All right, excellent. And then this is the hardest part. If you've ever tried to draw Greg, you know this is the hardest part. To draw a circle that's kind of almost perfect, right? And you stop right there, right? This is gonna be hard, I promise. You did a good job, excellent. All right, now the three sprigs of hair, right? And then an ear, okay? I like yours better. I, li I should have drawn them that way to begin with. And then is your guy gonna be happy or sad? Happy, okay, so we'll go happy with the Greg. And why don't you draw there? And what's your name again? Caleb. Caleb? All right, guys, let's give Caleb a big round of applause. Now I wanted to show you, people say, have you guys seen, you know the character Manny from my books? Okay. So if I was drawing Manny, I'm going like this, right? He's a little bit like SpongeBob, right? He's got those buck teeth. He's kind of like Greg, you know he's his brother because he's got those three sprigs of hair. There's Manny, he kind of looks like a baby alligator in a way, right? All right, so people say, you draw Manny so many times in Greg, you must be able to do it blindfolded, right? And I think somebody has a blindfold in here. Where, Jason Wells, where are you? Are you in here? He must be out in the hallway. Do you see Jason Wells out there? He's got my blindfold. Okay, I'm gonna, if I can't get a blindfold fast, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna promise you that my eyes are closed, okay? Deal? Okay. All right, he's not anywhere in the vicinity. So here we go. I'm gonna promise you I'm gonna draw Manny with my eyes closed and it's gonna turn out perfect. Are you ready? And I might need a little bit of coaching. Let's see, okay, so eyes closed, right? Paper is here, okay. So, so far so good, two eyes? Yes? Okay. Oh shoot, I've already lost my place. The eyes, are the eyes there? No? <laughs> okay, I'm going for it. Am I on track? Yes? No, okay. So we're gonna go with the, the mouth right now. And then we have the teeth, right? And then the neck, right? And then the ear. Everything's connected now, right? Okay. Hey, that's not bad. That's not that bad. So today, today is a special day. For me, this is the launch of Double Down. It's my 11th book, which is very exciting. And this one has a spooky theme. So I'm gonna show you some, of, how many of you guys have read one or some of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books? A lot, excellent. And show me real quick, I wanna know, you've got these paddles, and it's got two, they've got two books on either side. Show me the one that you like better, and I'll, I'll know which ones you guys like the best. Oh, interesting, interesting. 
Okay. I see old school. Old school looks like the most popular. Interesting. Oh, I also see the long haul. Okay, good to know. So in lots of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books, I have spooky things go on, right? So let's, let's look at some of the greatest hits of spookiness in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Oh, we're, in a whole, we're on a whole different track right now. Let's go on. Double down, right? There we go. And here we go. Right? Okay. That is Silas Scratch. My dad made up that character, Silas Scratch, and I took that idea from him many, many years later. All right, we also have, in another book, we have Santa Scout, right? A little bit scary. And Greg's doll, which is Alfredo. Do you remember? One of the scariest characters in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid books is Nasty Pants, right? And then a, there's a girl in Greg's class that Greg's really afraid of. Not, he's afraid of her. That's Ruby Bird, right? She bites a teacher, and then the tooth ends up in his arm. It's really gross. So in this book, I wanted to do a lot of spooky stuff. How many of you guys went out for Halloween last night? Yes. I missed my first ever Halloween with my kids to be here. Uh, but I wanted to show you, in this new book, I've got a parody of the, of the Goosebumps book. So I've got Spine Ticklers, right, Spine Ticklers. So these are scary books that really catch on with the kids. Let's look at another Spine Ticklers book right here. My teacher is a cannibal. Right. So I have the Spine Ticklers books. I have geese that chase the kids around. I have a witch that Greg is really terrified of. Now, how many of you guys have actually been scared of something like this? Your parent buys a Halloween decoration and it terrifies you. Anybody? Yes. So in Greg's world, they put the witch down into the basement, but any little sound sets it off, right? So if, if you drop a napkin upstairs, the witch might go off downstairs. So they actually take the batteries out of the witch and then it still goes off, right? Very terrifying. In this book, Greg and Rowley decide to make their own movie, which is called Night of the Nightcrawlers. It's about man-eating worms, okay? And they use gummy worms from Halloween, left over from Halloween, to make their own movie. So how many of you guys have seen any of the Diary of Wimpy Kid movies? Good. So you guys, if we can get our technology to work, you're gonna see something that no kid in the world has seen yet, okay? So right now, right now we're filming a new movie, we're filming The Long Haul in Atlanta, Georgia. Right now they're filming it. And they put together a clip so that you guys could see some of the stuff that happens. But I want to remind you of what happens in The Long Haul. Let's look at this. In the long haul, we have the pig. And Greg is carrying the pig, that's right. And they eat deep fried butter on a stick, right? These are things that happen in the long haul. So let's take a look. Let's do command tab to get to the finder. Just to the finder, that's right. And then la let's launch the one that says, uh, Movie teaser. So nobody's seen this yet. Let's see if this works. And we're gonna need the uh, we're gonna need the audio before we play it. So let's not play until we have the audio. Hi, my name's Jeff Kinney, and I'm the author of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. And I wanted to tell you about the new movie we have coming out, Diary of a Wimpy Kid: The Long Haul. With the new movie, we have a whole new cast. We've got Jason Drucker as a pint-sized Greg. We've got Charlie Wright as his rock and roll older brother, Roderick. We've got Wyatt and Dylan Walters, who actually fill the role of three-year-old Manny. We've got Tom Everett Scott, who plays the beleaguered dad, and the lovable Alicia Silverstone, who plays Susan Hefner. I can't wait for you to see the new movie. I think it's going to be the best Diary of a Wimpy Kid yet. So come on out and get wimpy in 2017. What do you think? Cool.
All right. So there's lots of, there are lots of interesting things going on in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid world next year. That's why this is an exciting year for me. Let's take a look at, and one more here. We had a balloon in the Macy's Day Parade, the Thanksgiving Parade, for six years, and now we've retired it. So we made a new balloon. So here's a sketch that almost nobody has seen yet. This is what the new one's going to look like. So Greg is sort of falling forward, right? And we also made a musical that ran in Minneapolis this year. And hopefully it'll come to DC one year. But you can see that Greg is looking down at the cheese. He's being warned not to eat the cheese or touch the cheese. So I thought I'd do something fun. I'm gonna start working on book 12 right away. But, thank you very much, but, I need, I need to put it together. So I thought maybe we could come up with the color and the title today. Does that sound cool? All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point to three kids, and you're going to tell me a title, a color that you like, OK? So right here, purple. So we have one purple book, but we can make another one, a different shade of purple maybe, yeah? Blue, maybe, in, maybe a really deep blue, that would be cool, yeah? Did you say red? Yeah, we have two red ones, but maybe we could do a different shade, yeah? Yellow, Yellow right? We, what's that? Gold. <laughs> oh, gold? Oh, that's cool, I like that, yeah, and right there? Say it again? Silver, that's interesting. Now, how many boys, if we made a pink book, how many boys would still read Diary of Whipping It? Thank you, all right. How many boys would not read it? And how many people would be in favor of a pink book? Yeah, interesting. Okay, good to know. All right, so now what I want you to do is think, okay, so we have one minute? Okay, actually, we'll get that, one minute. Um, so what I want you to do is, you notice most Diary of Wimpy Kid books are either one or two words. Let's say we come up with a two-word title for this book. So just think of any random word in your mind. Don't say it. Right? And we're going to put two words together and we're going to come up with a title. Now the rule is, I'm going to call out one of the words and then you can't change your word. No matter what is said, you cannot change your word when I pick the second person. Okay? You raised your hand right away. Do you have your word? Okay, say it. <laughs> banana man. Is that one word or two? Okay, let's go with banana and then you with the pink. Banana zebra. All right, let's try this again. Okay, hold on one sec. How about you, over there? Can you name, say one word? Oh, our microphones aren't working. Run, okay, run, and then this guy who's shaking his hand like that, yeah? 4K? I have never heard that word. <laughs> okay, we might need to work on this a little bit. How about, how about, if we go to questions. Do our microphones work? Okay, our microphones work. So I think we have, we have about 10 minutes for questions. Is that about right? So let's get a mix of kids, and if there are any teachers who have questions or grown-ups, uh, adults that came in, that would be great. So I'm gonna trust you guys to find people to, uh, to get your questions to. So I'm not gonna be able to get to everybody's questions, but I am doing a signing afterwards for those that can stay. Okay. We got this guy over here. Car. All right. Um, what will, do you have an idea of what will the new book, um, the 12th book name will be? That's, a, well, it's Banana Zebra, obviously, right? <laughs> now, we're, you know what? I, I usually don't have any idea of what the book is going to be all the way until the spring of next year. But this year, I do have an idea. I think it would be really fun to do a, a travel book. A, a, a holiday book where something big happens, a big holiday book. So Cabin Fever is a really small holiday book, but I want to do a really big holiday book. So I have an idea and I can't say too much. Okay? So we're going to trust you guys to find an audience, a, an audience member. I'm Houston and um, my question was, what holiday is it going to be that you just said? Christmas or... Um Easter or something like that. His birthday? 
Well, if you notice with the Diary of William P. Kidd books, I do them all in order. So if the last one happened in October, the next one happens in November, right? And so this is going to be the holiday season. You know, for me, that would be Christmas. For other people, it might be something different. But every, most people celebrate something in December, and that's what it's going to be about. Okay. Yeah? My name is Chase, and uh, do you have any idea for, for the new book, and like, what is the story? Like, That's a good, I'm, I can't say too much, but something I've never done before in the Diary of Wimpy Kid books is I've never had them travel on a plane. Now, how many people here have traveled on a plane? A lot. Right? How many people have not traveled on a plane yet? A good number, right? I was a teenager before I traveled on a plane for the first time. And I think it's an interesting experience. So let's get another. Okay, we got somebody up there. So are you going to like not only like travel on a plane? Um, you, I have a question that are you going to like make them like go to like hotels and ah and yeah yes i i can't make it too similar to the long haul right where they went to all these bad motels i'm so i'm gonna make this book different i think they're gonna spend time in airports okay we have another one coming up way up there tomorrow Hi. <laughs> are you gonna add new characters Am I going to add new characters? Yes. In this new book, a book I have a kid named Maddox, who is really the opposite of Greg in every way. He's very different from Greg. And if you notice, in, if you open up a Diary of a Wimpy Kid book, on the right-hand side of the page, the title page, there's always Greg versus a character. And so in this book, it's Maddox, because Maddox is really the opposite of Greg. Okay. Um, the on your title, Double Down has like circles. Does that relate to like cheese or That's anything right. in the story? If you look at Double Down, you'll notice that it, the words look like cheese. And that's because with this book, I felt like I was kind of starting over. So I wanted to make this book a lot like the first book. So a lot of things that happen in this book mirror what happened in the first book, including the reemergence of the cheese. Okay, right here. Uh, what? Uh, what? Are you going to make, it, are you gonna make uh, a book after the, um, that book? Oh my gosh. Am I going to make a book after that book? <laughs> yes, I'm going to keep going, hopefully, until, until I drop. So we're going to take about two more questions, and then I know some of you guys have to go. Some of you are going to stay, but let's get these two questions. Um, what was the, um, when did you start writing books? I started writing when I was 25, right? So now I'm 45, so 20 years ago, right? Okay, so we're gonna do one more question. Right up there. And we have two girls there, so we'll get both of them. We'll do two. What is Double Down mainly about? Double Down is about Greg trying to become a creator. He learns to play a musical instrument, and he makes films. His mom really wants him to get off the video games and make something. And that last question right there? Um, personally, what's your favorite book? Personally, my favorite book, it's always the latest one I wrote. I'm really happy with Double Down. But I like The Long Haul because it's, it's the most complete book, I think. I've gotten a little bit better at this year after year, so I think that's my best. So guys, like I said, some of you can stay and some of you can't. I wanted to say, first of all, again, I really apologize for not starting on time. I feel terrible about that. Thank you so much for being so patient. Thank you for coming out here, and thank you so much to the Library of Congress for having me. Take care. All right, how about that? I know he can hear us back there as he's going around to set up to be able to do book signing. So how about the loudest cheer to say thank you, Jeff? Thank you. Oh. 
So hang on, we're, we, um, just a couple words before we uh, dismiss and we are gonna ask that you stay seated as much as possible. If we could have everyone stay seated and dismiss in an orderly fashion, we'll do that. So we'd like to thank you for being here with us at the Library of Congress and we also would like to thank the Open Book Foundation who provided, uh, supplying some of the books for students today. If you're a school group and you wish to buy more books, they're still available in the vestibule, and Jeff will be there doing the book signing at the table outside. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.